I'm Michelle Stansberry from Little Penguin PR, and we're here today to talk about how to sell yourself with a story, uh, secrets PR agencies don't want you to know. Uh, why do we call it that? One, because it's what we're going to be talking about today, but also because we want to hook you in, right? That's the hook, the secret. Ooh, what don't I know? Right? That's a hook. And we're going to be talking about hooks and how to create hooks to get people interested in your story. Um, but first, I want to draw everyone's attention to a little worksheet with a penguin on it. Um, and this is just going to go over a couple things we're going to talk about. Um, before I like to launch into PR, I like to talk about the three different types of marketing. Because I get a lot of questions about what it is that I do. Um, a lot of people uh, wonder if I spend all my time on social media. Uh, a lot of people think I might uh, be involved in politics if they've watched a lot of scandal. Um, they, ha they bring a lot of different ideas about what PR is. Um, so I talk about what PR is and what it isn't through the three types of marketing. And there's a really easy acronym for that. It's POEM, P-O-E-M. So M standing for marketing. P is the first type of marketing. That's paid marketing. Paid marketing is really easy to understand because it's advertising. It's when you um, pay for some sort of marketing, you have control over what that looks like, whether it's a billboard, uh, maybe a direct mail flyer, or whether it's something like um, a, a digital paid campaign, like PPC, Google AdWords. So they're all paid marketing. The advantage of paid marketing is that you get to control the message and the audience um, that gets to see it. There's a lot of control in paid marketing. The disadvantage is we're bombarded with advertisements all the time, and it gets really easy to tune them out. So to, to get people's mind share and attention through paid marketing is challenging. Um, so the second type of marketing is O, owned marketing. This is a lot of what Henry was talking about in terms of uh, creating uh, your own content in your own forums, things like your blog, your newsletter, your website, different forums where you can reach out to your audience with value add content. Uh, so the only disadvantage to this um, is that you're reaching out to your own audience with this information. Um, and you're, as business owners, you want to get new people into that sales funnel, new people into your audience. Um, so that brings us to the third type of marketing, and that's earned marketing. Earned marketing is traditional PR. Um, it's where a third party, maybe a newspaper, a TV station, or even just an influencer, um, recommends who you are, what you're doing, your company, your business, your message, your story, through their outlets. So that's really powerful, one, because it's a sort of referral. It's not a one-on-one -on -one referral, but it's a one-on-many referral. So it can be really powerful for reaching new people, expanding your audience, and gaining a lot of credibility as an expert in the industry. So PR is what we're going to be talking about today, um, and I want to give you some really practical hands-on tips for do-it-yourself public relations. And if I could cue my assistant, Rick, um, to hand out some candy. Uh, this is going to illustrate one of the concepts of how, uh, how we can do PR. Um, so one of the first people that he's handing it out to, um, can you, one of you ladies tell me something about this candy? What's the first thing you notice? It's a kiss. It's a kiss? What did you notice? It has paper coming out the top. Uh-huh. <laughs> what else? Maybe more obvious. It's Halloween, it's Halloween candy. So it's Halloween candy. So raise your hand if you think I brought this candy because of 75% off at CVS because it's after Halloween. <laughs> fair. Totally fair. Um, also true, but it also serves to illustrate an example. Why is this candy wrapped in a Halloween wrapper? Why is this special? Why are you going to buy this? Now you're going to buy it because it's 75% off, but a month ago, why are you going to buy this? It's the same Hershey's Kiss, right? It's the same milk chocolate. It's not a special flavor. There's nothing, there's nothing that makes this different than a regular Hershey's Kiss, right? You don't eat the wrapper, you're just going to throw it away. Recycle it. I don't know, I don't know if you can recycle aluminum, probably you can. Um, but you buy it because it's, it's relevant and it's timely. It's the same Hershey's Kiss, but it's wrapped in something that makes it interesting, that makes you want to buy it because it's Halloween. So hold on to that for a minute. You can eat it if you want, but hold on to the concept um, while we talk about do-it-yourself public relations. So, First step to do public relations yourself, and this, by the way, is the secret that PR agencies don't want you to know, is that you can do PR yourself. It might take a little bit longer, um, a little bit more hard work than you know, hiring someone who's been doing this you know, their entire career, 
but you absolutely can do PR yourself. Um, so the first step is building a list. This is a question I actually got this morning. How do I know who to reach out to? How do I build that press list? Um, and it's really easy. It used to be hard. It used to be PR agencies were the gatekeepers between the press and business owners. Now, the press's information is online. You can go to, say, UT San Diego, the Union Tribune. Um, you can go to their website. You can get an entire list of every newsroom reporter. You can see what they cover, you can read some of their past articles, and you can get their email and phone number. And one of the secrets is that the way that reporters want to be reached out to is via email. You don't have to have some inside line to them. They want you to email them. That's why their emails are, are public on these websites. Um, so you can go to these different publication websites, get the contact information for either the editor, individual reporters for TV news, something like an assignment editor, and email them your pitch. You can build out your list, including, um, the, the, like I said, the topics that they cover, what they're interested in, um, and, and their contact information. And once you have that list, it's really easy to reach out to whoever you need to reach out to, depending on the pitch. So then you get to how do you pitch them. So the, this is the challenge. There's, um, you can get a lot of articles about how badly sometimes people pitch the press. The worst way to pitch the press is to say, I'm kind of a big deal. My company is the leader, innovator, most awesome company in, in all of the U.S. doing all these amazing things. You should find some story to cover us. It's tough. After the recession, reporters have way more to do and way less budget and way less help than they ever have before. So your job when you're pitching the press is to make their life easy. The first thing to do is to create a really compelling subject line. Reporters get hundreds or even thousands of pitches per day. Um, so they don't even open some of them. They have to have a compelling subject line on that email to get their interest up, to get them to open it. And then once they do open it, you want to be very clear and concise about what you're saying and how you're saying it. And you want to feed them that story. You don't just want to say, this is what I'm doing. You should write about it. You should say, here's the angle. In this case, here's the wrapper. Here's how this Halloween uh, Hershey's Kiss wrapper makes it timely and relevant to right now. It's the same core message about who you are, who your business is, but you wrap it in something that makes it an easy story. Or for Hershey's Kisses, an easy sell for you to say, oh, there's Halloween Kisses, let's get them. So you give them an easy wrapper. Um, you make that email concise, um, informative, but leave them wanting more. And you make sure that you're available to them because they're going to be on deadlines, they're going to be on schedules, so you need to be able to work around their schedules, so just let them know that. Let them know that you can work around their convenience. And then um, what to pitch the press. Um, one of uh, my favorite phone calls to get um, is somebody calling me up and saying, Michelle, we, we launched a new website. Can, can you do a press release about that? And I go, well, let's, <laughs> let's talk about that for a minute. Um, you're really excited that you launched a new website. Maybe you even have a new logo. You're, you're super pumped about it. You probably spent months looking over all the content and citing on colors. Who else is going to be really interested in this? Your team's going to be interested. Maybe your mama's going to be interested. Is, is a general population really going to be excited about your new website? Maybe if you're Google. Uh, but for the most part, no. Because it doesn't change their life at all. It doesn't impact them. It doesn't help them accomplish their goals. So when you think about what you're pitching to the press, think about the audience. Think about what could be valuable to them, what do they need to know, what's going to impact their life and what's going to help them in their business or their career or their personal life or whatever it is that your, your, your audience is. And then tailor your pitch to the appropriate reporter. There is a bad PR habit called plug and pray, which is where you take the same pitch and you send it out to your entire list and you hope someone picks it up. Um, what you should be doing instead is tailoring the pitch for what the reporter covers, for what their specific audience would be interested in. So by doing that, if, you're, if it's a technology reporter, you're going to focus on the technology aspects of it. If it is a lifestyle reporter, you're going to focus on the lifestyle of it. If it's a TV reporter, you're going to focus on what looks good on camera. What could, what could they show? 
because it's not really about what they're saying, it's about what they're showing when you're on live TV. So tailor the pitch to the reporter and then um, send it out and you're going to get a lot of no's, you're going to get a lot of rejection. Um, and more than rejection, you're going to get a lot of silence. But when you do get that yes, when you do get someone who wants to, to cover you and your story and your topic, it makes all the no's worth it, <laughs> I promise. Um, for people who are just starting out to do their PR, I like to suggest number three, awards. This is the easiest way to get um, a good amount of media exposure for very little work. I also like awards because they tend to have a deadline. It tends to be, you know, nominations need to be in by November 27th, so you have that deadline, that little kick in the butt to, to get started, to do something. Most of the local awards, um, so for here, San Diego, but um, in every sort of market they have their own awards, they tend to be free. So you don't even have to pay for the nomination or, or pay to be um, included. Um, and it generally takes between half an hour and an hour to, to nominate yourself for an award, and you can nominate yourself. Generally what you get um, here in San Diego, the San Diego Business Journal does a lot of awards, um, and they have some really good ones. Uh, Most admired CEO, Women Who Mean Business, powerful awards that um, help you build credibility as a business or a business owner. And so by applying for those awards, you know, keeping track of when they're coming up um, and applying yourself for them, you tend to get um, weeks and weeks and weeks of exposure in that publication. Generally, it's probably only going to be your name and your business name, but it's still, um, for several weeks, you get placement in that publication. Um, and then you get credibility. You can, take that, you can take that award and tell your own audience about it. Share on your social media channels. Share it on your newsletter and your blog and, and help engage people in your story and what's happening. The last resource I want to tell everyone so that they can get started on doing their own PR is a resource called Help a Reporter Out. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of Harrow. Awesome, okay. Doesn't need a lot of explanation then. Um, reporters who are looking for sources for their stories, industry experts, will put out queries. You get three emails a day um, with 50 to 60 queries in each. And anytime you think it's a good fit for you or your business, you can reply with a quote. Um, so through Harrow, um, you can be more reactive to things that reporters are already working off. Say maybe you don't, you're not really sure what to pitch for your own company. In a proactive way, you can be reactive respond to reporters' queries. And if anyone's interested in Harrow wants to learn a little bit more, feel free to give me your business card after this, and I can send you an email that has step-by-step -step instructions about how to sign up, the best way to respond, um, how to keep up with it. Um, and it's a great way for people who aren't PR professionals to get, to get exposure for themselves and position themselves as an expert in the industry. Um, so what I was hoping to do today, but I think we might be running out of time, is that right? Um, is to go through uh, a 2017 PR calendar. So if I could give people one piece of advice on starting to do their PO own PR, it's to create a PR calendar. This creates a guideline or a framework for how you can do your own PR. Um, because the hardest thing is trying to come up with story topics. What topics that relate to my business are going to be interesting to my audience? What is, what's the press going to want to pick up? And so by going through um, and looking at, this has the first eight months of 2017, just because I find working at, with 12 is a little challenging. Walk through those eight different months and see if there's anything that um, is happening in those months that relate to your business. Um, so maybe Halloween doesn't relate to your business, but what's today? Veterans Day, right? Um, so if your business has any sort of tie-in to veterans, if you, um, if you serve veterans. Um, so for example, today I have a family law client. Um, they work with a lot of uh, active duty military on child custody cases. Because if you're deployed, it can be really challenging to get custody of your child during a, uh, during a divorce. So family law and veterans, you might not necessarily see the tie-in, but you can see how you can tie in that story of who you are and what you do to different things that are happening throughout the year. So some of those might be static things happening through the year, like a Veterans Day, a Valentine's Day, maybe it's March, it's the end of tax season and you're, you have some sort of tie into taxes, or maybe it's something that's happening with your business. Maybe you are launching a new product, maybe you are um, doing something that is newsworthy in your own business that's happening during a, a set month. So generally when you start to fill out this calendar, you'll realize there's gaps. There's months where you don't have any particular topic. For those, you can put in evergreen topics. 
Evergreen topics are topics that aren't tied to a specific date or time. They're not as timely, but they're still interesting topics. The topics that maybe have a unique spin or a unique approach. Um, and those you can sort of fill in on those months where you don't have anything that's really driving that time hook. So you fill those in and then you have for 2017 a PR calendar. And you know each month what you're going to be pitching out. And sometimes it's going to be really appropriate to pitch out to the press. Sometimes it might be more of an internal thing, like maybe you're moving into a new office and that's something you want to send out in your newsletter or put on your blog, make a social media announcement about it, use those owned media channels. But um, if you do have something that's, that's worthy of press attention, you'll already know what you're pitching to the press. You can already think of, start to think about different angles of how can this fit into a business reporter versus a technology reporter versus a lifestyle reporter. What would the visual look like on, on TV versus on print? Um, so you can start to think through these topics and then you have that path to take next year. Because the hardest part about PR is just getting started. Um, with that, I would like to turn it over to Henry to continue the conversation about selling yourself with a story. But before you applaud, um, since we only had 15 minutes here today, I wanted to make sure everyone knows that um, if you are more interested in developing this 2017 PR path, I'm happy to sit down with anyone here for a one hour free consultation where I can walk you through what you're thinking of for your 2017 PR strategy, help you pick out maybe what pieces are going to be the most interesting to the press, what you know, maybe are more appropriate for own media, help you brainstorm some new ideas that maybe you haven't thought of before. So my email is here on the bottom of that. It's Michelle at Little Penguin PR. Feel free to email me um, to schedule a, a one hour strategy session um, as, a, as a thank you for being here today. This is amazing. What?